<laughs> God, we just love you. We love you. We thank you for all the hearts and minds that have come together for the lifting of the word. In this day and time, God, we indeed ask for a better understanding, more wisdom. And then, God, we ask for minds that will follow the leading of that understanding and that wisdom. And that we would, would dare and be ready to do only what you've told us to do, no matter how impossible it may seem. I thank you for the new mercies that greeted us. And God, I always, always welcome your spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit, heavenly dove. With all of your life-giving power, touch, revive, renew in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The law and love. What, what more do you need? The law and love. As we begin to go to our first slide, we're in such interesting times. And when I was a little girl and younger, people would be like, we're in the last hour. I'm telling you, we're in the last minutes. The law and love. We see what Jesus says in this text. You have heard that it is said. That means this is a communal way of being for the Jewish community. And this is when he's uh, doing his sermon on the Mount. <clears throat> And Jesus is giving them so much truth about how they're really supposed to be. And sometimes when we get mired down in our systems and traditions, we can lose sight of what the pure will and purpose of God is in our lives. And Jesus is like, no, 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 you've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, oh, that you may be sons and daughters of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. What is powerful about this is most people live in that eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth type of place. And Jesus is coming about telling them how to live godliness, godliness. You hear me? Godliness through law and love. Through law and love, you can live a godly life. Not even negating the law. He's explaining to them what the law is really saying and what it was really about. And as we've been studying church history, we've discovered that in the didache, the teaching of the apostles, there was more to this, what Jesus was saying. It, how it got deleted in other translations, I do not know. But as you read, now these words, the doctrine is this. Bless those who curse you, pray for your enemies, and fast for those who persecute you. What a big difference. How many of you have, have fasted for your enemies because you love them? And see, this is a mindset right here. This is definitely a mindset because if you take on that task, you've got to look past the person. And if you begin praying and fasting for those who are your enemies and those who persecute you, you begin to see the principalities and the powers behind them that's manipul manipulating them. Spirits of habit, spirits of anger, spirits of rejection. Sometimes we negate all that. We only see the angry face that's right in front of us. And then sometimes you may get down to, well, that person was so abused that that made them mean and hard. Jesus is telling us how to bring about a right now correcting of space and time spiritually for those who come against us. And you know how I know this works. The early church prayed and fasted for the Roman government. And the next thing they knew, the Roman government was saying, well, we're a Christian government now. As we move on to the next slide, get this mindset. Jesus is trying to change, change your mind about the how to. 
the how be, how we be, the how to and how we be with this sermon. So law, I wanted you to see it in Hebrew and in the Greek, nomos, Torah and nomos. The command hate your enemy has puzzled many scholars and it can't be found as a quotation, nor can it be considered as a fair interpretation of Jewish ethics of the time. The command love your neighbor comes from Leviticus 19, 18. And it was always interpreted so as to apply to fellow Israelites, not aliens. So what Jesus would remember, Yeshua says, I came to the house of Israel first. So he's trying to clean up their thinking as he's teaching and preaching. Because in their community, of course, we can look at the history of how Peter treated the Gentiles and others. There was, I mean, it just was if they're others, they're not part of us. But Jesus is trying to teach them that you have to love people, love them enough to, to fast for them and to, to pray for them. As we move on to the next slide, I believe that um, this change and this shift in our hearts and minds is one that's, that's relevant and necessary because of where we are in the timeline. We can no longer just throw up a cute little prayer, bless them, Lord, and keep going. We have to dig in, understanding that we are the ones bringing the fullness, as Jesus did, of the law and love. Jesus fulfilled the law. Now, Christ rejects the charge of critics that his teachings were intended to abolish the law and the prophets. Instead, Christ has come to explain the real meaning of the law. His explanation of law reveals the defects in the Pharisees or preachers cl who claim to be righteous. In a series of examples, Jesus shows how, how that God demands righteous intent. Oh, let's stop right there. God demands righteous intent. Some people go about doing good all the time and they hate the people they're doing the good for. I've met them my whole life. They hate the people they're doing the good for. And some of you may have encountered them because we generally say, well, why are you doing this job if you don't even like these people? See, the, if you have the righteous intent, it shifts everything that you're doing. God demands righteous intent as well as lawful acts. Righteousness is a matter of the heart and not only behavior. In calling for perfection, Jesus reminds us that true righteousness is actually found only in being like God. And you know, we forgive a lot, we let a lot go, but Jesus is saying, you know, you can, oh, I'm gonna let that go, but it's the intent of your heart. That's what's being read. That's why I said you had, you had to have good common sense a few weeks ago. This is about centering who you are, and understanding, yes, you're supposed to be God-like, just like I can see your, your children and things like that and be like, oh, they're acting just like their dad. They're acting just like their mom. Was their mom and dad like? And if God is the ultimate parent, shouldn't we be God-like? The law and love. You can be following the law, and as God said it, your heart is far away from God. Intentionality is important, and it is also important when you're dealing with those you deem an enemy or someone you think is persecuting you. As we move on to the next slide, you got to rethink that. Don't do things just to do them. Get the intent of your heart right. And sometimes we've done this certain things for so long, we just think we should do them, whether our heart is in it or not. No matter how long you have traveled on a road, you can always turn around. And Jesus is telling them, wait, 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 turn around. The text doesn't say that, though, doesn't say those Jesus discusses will be blessed but that they are. Let me read that one more time. The text doesn't say those Jesus discusses will be blessed, but that they are. You are blessed. 
what Jesus is trying to tell them is deal with the intent of that centering part of who you are. Understand who you are. And then how you are should reflect the intent of your heart and who you are. It is better part of before this text, Jesus is giving the Beatitudes. And I thought it was important to give a little part of that to set up why he's saying this. It is better to be poor in spirit, to mourn and to be meek than to adopt the attitudes of the world. Beatitudes. You don't want the attitude of the world. The poor in spirit recognize their spiritual destitution and depend on God. Those who mourn are sensitive to their spiritual faults and seek God's help and comfort. The meek are malleable, open, and responsive to God. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are the only ones who seek it. You see, sometimes you're like, well, the poor in spirit. The poor. It was... Jesus was saying, yeah, but those that are poor in spirit, they're doing something different from those who are mourning. The perspective here is to give you a different view of the things of God that you might rise and understand that you're one of the main things of God, being a child of God. And Jesus wanted to shift their attention away from the dogma and this the rigidness of just going through motions, going through motions, doing, and their heart wasn't in it. The minds nor their heart was in it. They did it because that's what they thought kept them in league with God. It's passionate love. See, we can't, church has played a certain type of game for so long. It's passionate love desire for God, seeking those things of God, serving and loving other people with a heart of God, with a mind of God that says, yes, I love you. And walking away and then don't be, be critical of those people. Just like yesterday, I posted, uh, we grabbed from uh, Instagram that they were opening areas that were heating centers in Columbus because it's been so cold for the homeless. See, you, you have to be willing to think ahead on those things. What do people need? And I know people are totally against socialism and things like that, but when we look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he was the spiritual aspects of what he gave to the people. Think about it, he's been, ascended for over 2,000 years, and we're still getting full and excited and ready to work just off of what he said for three years of ministry. Imagine when we have eternity with him, what it will be. An exciting time. That actuality that happens in the presence of the Son of God. And if you're not ready to, to make that turn around, at least stop going the wrong way. Some people aren't willing yet to make that. Just stop and begin to listen more and pray for understanding and wisdom. Moving on to the next slide. I've always had a problem with loving your enemy. Because I, you guys know I'm a natural fighter, right? So I'm like, well, why would I love them? But when you get into the fullness of this text, you begin to understand that Yeshua was trying to get them to change their minds about how they think of others, pure and simple, no matter what their situation is. You cannot have the law without love, and you cannot have love without an understanding of the law. I pray that this has added a blessing to your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.